Okay, we're going to go through this experiment today, the force on the wire in a magnetic field. And the setup is fairly straightforward. We're going to use this uh, magnet setup here with a current, uh, with a piece of wire with a current flowing through it in between, and we're going to produce a force. <clears throat> now, this is the um, printed publication by AQA, and I think the direction of that force is the wrong way around. But let's just talk about the theory first. We know that the force exerted on a wire, the, qu the size of the force, is going to be the magnetic field multiplied by the current, multiplied by the length the conductor sits in the magnetic field, i.e. L. L here is there. The current um, on the wire, of course, is indicated. We need to know the size of that. And then finally, we need to work out which, once we've got the size of the force, which direction the force is acting in. Um, if you can recall <coughs> the left-hand rule, the left-hand rule, I'll shrink that right down, indicates the direction of the magnetic field. So the thumb is the thrust, the first finger is the field, and the second finger is the current, and it's the left-hand rule because we're looking at the direction of force. So if I look here, the I'll do this in blue, for the magnetic field goes north to south, in all cases, which it is, the current, the green, is coming out along here, so therefore the force must be up. So I think that is actually incorrect. I think we're going to get a force moving up. But nonetheless, either way, what we're trying to do is create this vertical force. And the reason why we're trying to create this vertical force is because we're going to place this on a top band pan balance to give us an indication of the mass or the change in mass that happens as we change the current. So if I just uh, move that, yeah, that horrible drawing, we're now, now you know the idea of it, let's just talk about what we're changing and what we're going to measure. So if we're going to um, our independent variable, what we're changing is going to be the current. And what we're measuring is going to be the force. So in the usual way, we write down a, um, a um, table of results. We are changing the current in amps, and we're measuring the force, or indeed the mass, because the balance actually measures the mass. Once, twice, three times, and an average in grams. And that will be the table of our results. Let me just, um, okay. Good. So the table of our results. Right, let's go on to looking at then... So if that's a theory, let's go on to the experimental setup and what we're going to do with it. The experimental setup, I have another diagram here for you, which might make life a little easier to see. We are going to... Here is uh, my magnetic field acting between the two. We've then got a current coming along and the clamp stand holds the wire in place. I then place a cross and through there um, a varying quantity of voltage, so we want a variable voltage supply. And then hopefully that will give me a reading on my top pan balance as to how much current I've got 
and how much force is being exerted. There's a few things to bear in mind in terms of the setup. First of all, this, this variable voltage. You might need... Um, it depends what kit you've got. However, what I did was I placed it through a variable resistor so I could be a little more careful about the current that I was getting. However, this the current here we're looking to go between 1 to 6 amps. Now that is a very big current for the classroom. So just be aware you don't end up burning out any of your any of your devices like I did. So we're going to measure we're looking to alter to get precise currents and then measure uh, the top pan balance. Okay, let's see uh, my attempt at this experiment. Hold on. Good, here it is. Let me zoom this up. And we'll have a listen to it. Okay, here is the experimental setup. <clears throat> I have my top band pan balance, and I have my piece of copper wire that's suspended from these two clamps that runs through this um, these magnets and a brace. I've doubled up the magnets on both sides, and I'm going to place that on the top balance. I'm going to hopefully have the piece of wire running through the centre of the magnets but this must be firmly fixed because when a current's flowing we're hoping that it exerts a force on the magnets which will be registered as a change in mass. The force will be registered as a weight which is registered as a mass in grams. I know that's not technically right but nonetheless we'll do the sums to correct that later. So this force will be represented by the grams. So once it's set up you need to zero that of course which I have done because that's when there is no current flowing through. I have um, an ammeter here. Um, it's got this shunt. It's being registered between 0 and 10 amps. So that means on this scale here I'm using the top scale from 0 to 10. It's an analog meter. It works quite nicely. And then you need a variable voltage supply. I have this one. Um, schools will have their own versions, but um, I've decided to actually have a set voltage and then push it through a potentiometer or a variable resistor, which I find um, adjusts the current just as well. So let's see what we do. It's, it's easy. Once set up, it's very easy. Let's zero that. Turn on my voltage supply. And you notice that suddenly I'm coming up to about 2 amps. And at 2 amps, I've got 0 0.72 grams registered of force. Of force. And then simply what I do is I move this to the next position, which is 3 amps. Take the reading again. This is my independent variable. I change again to 4 amps. I retake that. And then to 5. And when we're getting up to this range now, 5 amps is a lot of current flowing through. So this will be heating up. This is going to be heating up. So do these fairly rapidly. I'm going to do 1 at 6. And then I'm going to come back down again. And it might be a chance to give your variable voltage supply a rest. And to give the whole system a rest before you repeat the second ones. Good. This actually ended up smoking when I did to start with. That is hot. That is hot. No, 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 she's not as bad. So just be warned, if you're using variable resistor, it will heat up rapidly for the currents that we're looking for. Good. That's the setup. Okay, so here are my results that I took. I've got the current from 1 to 6 amps. I've got the mass <clears throat> measured in grams with my averages and the length of the magnets at 5 centimetres. So you might want to um, press pause and copy those results down. But they will give rise to, when you plot them, um, a very accurate graph 
It looks like that. We have mass in grams against the current in amps is a nice straight line with a gradient given and an intercept that pretty much goes through the zero, zero. Let's try and explain some of the theory and what calculations we make there. We started from this point that force is magnetic field times current times length. Of course, I'm not measuring the magnetic field. I'm measuring the mass. Sorry, the force. I'm measuring the mass. So mg is b i l, and m will therefore be b the force will be b i b l. Sorry, over g times i. So therefore, you can see that the equation of a straight line indicates, which we can see of course, that if you plot y as m and x as i, you will get the gradient to be bl over g, and it should go through zero. So therefore my gradient here is going to bl over g. However, bear in mind, this is measured in grams and not kilograms. So therefore, we're going to have to put a correction of a thousand in a little later on. Nonetheless, let's first of all work out G, G over L will give us the magnetic field strength. And this G is a thousandth that's correct, but this is in mass, is in grams, and actually that's a thousandth of the SI units. So therefore, this will be 1,000 underneath there. So what does that give us? That gives us 0 0.368 times 9.81 divided by 1,000 times 0 0.05 of a centimetre. And now that... That should give us 0 0.07 of a Tesla. Maybe I'll try and write that a little bit better. 7 of a Tesla. And we should be getting results around about 5 times 10 to the minus 2 Tesla. So in actual fact, that's worked out really well. Excellent. Hope that makes sense.